This week on CrossFeed. Air Force Academy shenanigans. All-inclusive religion divided. Pink occult objects. You got Islam and my Christianity. And one more, one more Super Bowl ad. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, of Massachusetts tonight, broadcasting from my office. Um, decided uh, not to go all the way home and just do it here. So doesn't he look scholarly with all those books behind him? I have scrapbooking supplies behind me. <laughs> I see windows behind you. Yeah, that too. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. So, um, so how was your week, Jim? It was very good. It was very good. Um, just finished up our, our vision team meeting. We've got a team coming to figure out what our vision is going to be and some really exciting things going on here. So it's been a very good week. Kind of, um, cool. Yeah, My very vision good is usually Bowl. 2020 hindsight. Yeah, I, uh, that's, that, unfortunately, most churches are. Um, but you know, one of the the idea of a leader is you've got to you got to have a vision. You've got to have an idea where people are going. If they don't know where you're. If you don't have an idea where you're going, you're not really a leader. I don't know what you are. But, so uh, we're we're kind of constructing that. And now we're at a good place in in our lives here with me being here five years to really talk about what what kind of vision we want to accomplish as a group. So cool. I'm getting a hum. Don't know why you'd be getting a hum. Your fan, maybe, or something like that? Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, the fan is going on the computer. Okay, I'll try to filter that out. Uh, apologies to anybody um, if it gets annoying. So. Okay. So, Super Bowl? Was very good game this year. Um, I, You know, I really had to sit there. I, after watching, because we talked about the Tim Tebow ad last week, after watching it, I'm just like, these people had to feel, feel like just absolute, well, you know, it'd be good if they felt like absolute idiots. Then they started complaining that there's an under, undertone of violence against women. <laughs> oh, because he tackled his mom? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out why they didn't say that about, you know, Betty White getting tackled, but, you know. That, well, that, you know. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's okay. She's just an old person anyway. <laughs> we don't care about them. No, it, it, that's funny because, you know, I saw it and I kind of went, that was it? That was nothing. <laughs> it was, like, was kind of lame too. But, you know, I mean, it was kind of like, I, and I, the next day I posted on Twitter something about um, the, uh, that folks on the family should send now and um and Planned Parenthood a thank you letter <laughs> for promoting their ad so much because the ad didn't do a whole lot and nobody would have even known what it was about if it weren't for the fact that now and Planned Parenthood made a big stink about it. Well, there was more than one pundit out there who thought that was their plan all along. Could be. So. If it was, it was pretty shrewd on their part. Yeah. If it wasn't, but they were lucky. Yeah, but there was another ad that um, you know I I really got I really got a kick out of the ad, and that was uh, one of the Doritos ads. Uh, now the uh, the three Doritos ads actually were all uh, amateur; they weren't um, done by a professional ad company. This is uh, like what Dorito the third year in a row they've done that now. Yeah, I think that I, I, that I couldn't tell you, but um, yeah, people created their own ads and sent them in, and um, the top so many got put on a, a website, and people saw them and voted on them. And so the one that had uh, the guy uh, wanted to be buried in a thing of Doritos and fake the funeral so he'd have all the Doritos on him and was watching the Super Bowl and, you know, crunched over and it was a miracle, which, I, again, I thought it was a very, very well done ad, was actually done by a church group. It was okay. Uh, it was, I, my complaint was, and I noticed this right away, when, when, it, when the thing tipped over and he fell out, there was no TV. I did not know that. 
where the TV go? <laughs> it like evaporated. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that they did that so that um, nobody would get hurt or anything, you know, but where did the TV go? So. See, that didn't even occur to me. But um, it um, it was done by a group out in uh, um, California called Mosaic Church. Um, and it's a uh, – uh, um, Mosaic Church is a really creative church there. A- a- Aaron McManus, I believe is the name of the pastor. Mm-hmm. And it's an in- it's a, a, a independent church. But it's actually kind of a mini domination because they have like six or seven franchises. Seven congregations. And, Pasadena, Whittier, downtown L.A., Beverly Hills, Redondo Beach, and Chino and, and Berkeley. And one of their um, uh, goals of the congregation, one of their values, is the uh, creative use of the arts. And so this was uh, some people of the congregation that... that uh, Developed this, so it's really. I thought it was. I thought it was a well done ad. Um, you know, be kind of cool. But I think you'd have to be a church in Southern California in order to have the, you know, the the, the producers and the directors and the stuff like that. You can put that something like that together. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I had kind of mixed when I found out it was a church doing it, and I, I saw the ad before the Super Bowl. Um, so. Because I heard there was a church doing an ad. I saw a link on Twitter, and I went and checked it out. So I kind of spoiled it for me, because I would already seen it. But, so, I mean, okay, here's the question. Is it appropriate for a church to be doing uh, an ad for Doritos um, just as a, you know, not... You know, they, they said, well, it sort of had somebody rising from the dead, but it didn't have much to do with Christian faith, right? And, and yeah, it really had nothing to do with Christianity. Um, it's not like even there was a, when the pastor was preaching the funeral sermon, mentioned, you know, anything about Jesus or anything, at least from what I could tell. That wasn't, wasn't really noticeable anyway. But, you know, so... You know, you talk about churches having vision and, and stuff like that. And to me, it seems like I mean, as as fun commercial, you could argue about, you know, like the people using their gifts um, uh, sort of from a, um, 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 why am I drawing a blank on the word? I don't have sleep. Um Concentrate, Pinky. Concentrate. Ah, vocation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, from a vocation standpoint, people have those gifts. You want to use those gifts. All right. But I would say, you know, are you using those gifts to glorify God or are you using them to line your pocket? And not that there's anything wrong with making money using the gifts that God has given you. But this is a, this wasn't just like a bunch of guys who are all friends from this church got together to do it. This was a church sponsored activity. Not that the church necessarily it doesn't look like the I mean people pitched in their donations and stuff to do it. But this was I mean this was a church activity. And it just seemed kind of odd to Yeah, this is what my church is doing. Not, you know, spreading the gospel or anything. It's a money making scheme. <laughs> Well, you got to know a little bit about Mosaic Church, okay? This is a congregation, a series of congregations that do a tremendous amount of service and volunteering, a tremendous gospel work. They really do. It's it's a you, you, it's a it's a really awesome situation. Um, matter of fact, a book that I'm reading right now um, called "The Externally Focused Church" and talks about serving, using your congregation as a servant-based uh, ministry. And asking how can we serve the community? That's their church's focus is, is uh, featured in it for everything that they do. So this is just one small part. Normally, what this group does is produces short films that they use in the, the worship service to uh, highlight maybe a, 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 a point in the sermon or the theme of the day or something like that. Like it, you know, but it kind of grew out of when they heard this contest. They thought one of the um, uh, members of the team. 
his father was his grandfather was buried with with beer and cigarettes, and he thought it'd be kind of funny to do this commercial. So it kind of grew out of that. Um, and then they kind of said, you know, we think this would be fun to see if we can, you know, to 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 um, you know get this in and let's get it filmed and everything. So it, you know, this this group really is more much more worship oriented normally. But this was kind of an extracurricular they put together, just and a coffee break kind support. of thing. <laughs> yeah, just you know, just kind of a, something that they they, they did. Um, I thought it was very well done, and I was really impressed to see that a you know a, a church group had had done that. I think you know, uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun to be you know, involved with something like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, all right, I'll give it yeah. to you. As long you know, as, as long as it's a. Uh, uh, divergence from the norm and not, you know, sort of typical. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about things that are typical. Um, that's Hartford Seminary and um, well, how they uh, look at Islam. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. This article is, um, you get, you got to kind of preface this, uh, so much of this is true nowadays that you, you have to look at the source, all right? This is in WorldNet Daily, which, if you're not familiar with it, it makes Fox News look liberal. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, this, every once in a while you hear the pejorative right wing, well, this this would definitely kind of air net that, that pejorative statement. Um, uh, this is, you know, kind of the flip side to um, Slate, Salon, Huffington Post, except Huffington Post is really a series of blogs. Um, yeah, but it's it's kind of that's okay because we have a story later on that's going to come up with which came from a very left wing blog. So, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so we we'll, we'll, we'll balanced it out tonight. Uh, so yeah, but it's just balanced. Kind of the, yeah. Free report. You decide. Anyway, so <laughs> now we decide to. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, this is the the real law. This is just the, the headline, you know. Christian churches fed Islam light. Experts say Muslim Brotherhood carrying out domination strategy in the United States. Okay, well, that kind of is it. But basically, though, there is a... Um, uh, um, a lot of churches are being kind of bought into a... a uh, um, uh, they, he argues, a, a light version of, of uh, Islam. Uh, that, uh, you know, we're really just this peaceful religion and, you know, and really we get along quite well. And, uh, so, uh, for example, they said that, you know, there was a, uh, United Church of Christ Church had an Islamic speaker as a guest and then they got upset at, um, Hartford Seminary, which is located in Hartford, Massachusetts, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, um, because they actually have a full-time Muslim and, uh, on staff there. And they have a center for Christian Muslim relations. Is this any way to treat an intimate friend? All right. Um, first of all, the way that this, um, the way this story is going, they're they're sort of automatically equating Islam with terrorism. All right. And now you got to understand that the Quran is a very violent book. Now, of course, the Bible is a very violent book too, but. Um, the difference being that in the Bible, you have these sort of specific violent events, but they're not prescriptive. They're descriptive. They're, you know, describing specific events that happened a long time ago and are not considered to be, you know, sort of a go and do likewise sort of thing. Um, they were specific events for specific people at a specific point in time in history, and that's it. And, uh, and yes, there's lessons to be learned from that, but it's not to be emulated. And so with, uh, um, with the, the Quran, with Muhammad, that wasn't the case. I mean, he specifically makes a point of saying that sometimes you got to use force to promote your religion. All right. And, you know, whereas you have Jesus's was very peaceful. He, you know, willingly went to his death. He, the only time he ever did anything remotely violent was, uh, when he turned over the tables, um, to, to defend the, really what he was doing was defending the Gentiles and, and the disenfranchised. And, uh, and he did 
make a whip, you know, but he didn't go around killing people. He just, um, you know, sort of shook things up and said, get out of here. And <laughs> that's about it. Um, and, uh, you know, he even, you know, went so far as when one of his followers did um, pull out a sword and start using it, he, he told him to knock it off and put it away, and he healed the guy. <laughs> so, um, you know, that Jesus was, was all about bringing um, peace, and peace not just the absence of war, um, but uh, complete whole human uh, peace. And... Um, Muhammad was much more violent in, in the way that that he worked, but you know, and and so you have that in the Quran, you have the that sort of teaching. Um, but most modern Muslims um, are not, you know, they they see it more as jihad doesn't mean war; it means struggle. Um, you know, even almost like. Uh, uh, Lutherans would use the word tentatio, the sort of struggling with uh, things in life. You know, it's it's not exactly the same concept, but uh, you know, if if you talk to um, modern Western Muslims, you know, they're they really don't like to talk about the whole terrorism thing. They're kind of embarrassed by it, the same way that we're embarrassed by uh, doctor or uh, people who kill abortion doctors. You know, sort of don't equate uh, us not with the, them. Right. The, the, I, as a matter of fact, there's some very, it sounds kind of strange to say, but some secular Muslims, there are people, you know, just like they're non practicing Christians. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. 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 Or, I mean, we get up here, we get a lot of people say, I'm Protestant. You know, or well, they never go to church. They never, they, in the same way, I, I've known a few, you know, secular Muslims, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, that's the kind of the, the family religion, but they don't really practice it very, very carefully. Um, it's interesting, by the way, in this article, in the second paragraph says, a spokesman for an Islamic awareness program which monitors how Islamic law motivates Muslims to participate in jihad. Never says what her name is. This and which is strange if you're a spokeswoman, if you're the spokes, spokeswoman, then I think, you know, you'd know. It never says what the name of the program is. Mm -hmm. It names a couple others, but never says uh, hers. Now, on the other hand, OK, now part of me says, OK, I think there is a need to develop dialogue and understanding and to have a uh, Muslim uh, come and speak at your church to, you know, just to say, let me share with you a little bit about what we believe and, you know, we'd like to have, have you share with us what, what you believe. Um, I think it could be, you know, a very good thing and can actually open up a door for the gospel. Uh, what's the scary part is, though, here is that, um, you know, uh, Hartford Seminary is not interested really in sharing the gospel with Muslims. They're just interested in dialogue. Or the other one is, uh, is that, again, this the spokeswoman who this mysterious spokeswoman here says, um, you know, St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Manchester, Connecticut, invited a Muslim congregation to use St. Mary's Church for their Friday prayers. Yeah. Um, yeah. The secretary would not comment on the actions, but a report in the local journal Inquirer reported the development, noting the congregation had been pleased to find ways to work together. Um, again, you can you can work together in, you know, Haiti relief. You know, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, to a certain extent, I mean what you want to accomplish there, but I would really feel very uncomfortable to have a non-Christian group worshiping in an area that's been consecrated and set aside for the proclamation of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, that, that would be, you know, sort of, you know, using a biblical example, that would be um, like allowing um, uh, Allowing the, the, the Zeus worshipers to go, um, and worship in the temple or even a synagogue for that matter, you know, um, in, in the, in the New Testament or, you know, like, hold on, this is set aside for a specific purpose. And I mean, as much as we want to, you know, work with people of other religions and understand them better and all that kind of stuff, there still is such a thing as idolatry, right? It's not a, it's not a popular right. word nowadays. 
But I mean, there is a flip side to this, you know, to, just to highlight real, you know, to mention, you know, because, um, you know, I mean, you know, we, we churches often begin in school auditoriums, uh, or in, um, I've known, uh, uh even odd, uh, 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 odd fellow halls, uh, which is a, a lodge group up here and some other places that aren't, you know, that are kind of, you know, okay. Yeah. You know, I speak my, yeah, it's a little iffy. In my, in my mind. Um, but I mean, but you're not necessarily, um, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're dedicating it that space for the hour that you're there or the couple of hours that you're there. Um, you, but you know, something that you, you, you know, when we dedicate a church, we're specifically saying this is set aside for the worship of the triune God and for the proclamation of the gospel. I think that's a little bit different. I, I just, that made me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, you might as well just set up a golden calf in there. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Well, it's it's only in there for the hour. <laughs> Still a golden calf. You know? <laughs> well, the other thing I have to laugh about this article, though, is that the effort to co-op Christian churches includes an attempt to water down Christian theology. And it's talking about this um, British Muslim banner, which says Jesus was a Muslim. Um and the Council on Islamic American Relations Care has information about Jesus and the book Jesus Prophet of Islam. Um, and they had a sign, Islam, the way of life of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Um, you know, and this guy at the end says, you'll never hear a Muslim say Jesus is the son of God. Okay. <sighs> if you read the Quran, I, I'm just sitting reading this going... If you read the Quran, Jesus is listed as a prophet. Uh, they quote Jesus when he talks, you know, uh, I'm leaving, but another one is coming now, you know, who is, who, who's going to lead you in the further truth. We understand that to be the Holy Spirit. But in Muslim theology, the Quran, they quote that and they say Jesus is prophesying the coming of Muhammad. So yes, they do believe Jesus, that this is an honest belief by them. Yeah, this isn't some, they're, they're not trying to, you know, make, uh, make, make, uh, Christians into Muslims or, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, I, I suppose that's what they want, but, um, th this isn't some scheme they came up with. No, they, they really do believe that. They have always believed that. <laughs> right. I decided like this. <laughs> <sighs> So they call him Isa. Yeah. So. Um, so and they, and they believe that I, I I read this somewhere that that he was actually a greater prophet than Muhammad. He just wasn't the last prophet. Muhammad was the last prophet. And so right. sort of his final uh, his Muhammad's interpretation and in that is final because he was the last one, and so he interprets all those that went before him. But yeah, they. Jesus, they, you know, they uh, deny the resurrection, or they say that Jesus didn't actually die on the cross. He just uh, swooned. Um, Jesus was nowhere near the cross, some of them would say. It was yeah. somebody else up there. I mean, yeah, they, they just can't understand. Again, but, you know, they couldn't. How could God allow his prophet to die? I mean, for them, that's just that's right. a horrendous thing. That, that's but, something God would never do. But, you know, we would say that's a different Jesus. You know, your understanding of who Jesus is, that's just, that's not when, when St. Paul said it, you know, when somebody else comes along with a um, uh, uh, different Jesus than, than I have preached to you, even if it's an angel from heaven, you know, don't believe him. Right. So. Uh, oh, yeah, Muslims do. Actually, I would say, you know, because then they say about, uh, you know, how can God do that? That's what Paul says, this cross is the stumbling block. Right. Well. Uh, actually, you, you want to really understand what the people of the first century understood by the cross and why that was so hard for them. The idea that, you, did, you know, this crucified person brought salvation to the world. Uh, it's really very similar to the, the, the Muslim mindset. And that's really why it's, it's such a stumbling block. Yeah. Um, so speaking of, you know, uh, uh, pluralism, which uh, which pluralistic story do you want to do next? <laughs> We've got a few of them. Uh, let's go over to the Air Force Academy. Okay. Um, since we're talking about uh, Christians and, and other religions and their income. I'll tell you, this 
this is a, this is called veteranstoday.com. Uh, what a, I don't know where this guy was a veteran at, man. I'll tell you, he is, uh, extremely, uh, um, uh, uh, left wing, um, uh, blog here. And, uh, I mean, not, uh, does not like, uh, they're not like Christians at all. Um, but anyway, now there was a, I, I, did we report on this? Um, no, but it was up on the CrossFeed site that the Air okay. Force Academy, we, a while back we talked about there were complaints. And this was like a couple years ago. There were complaints about the fact that the pagans, um, had a religious, uh, location on the grounds of the Air Force Academies in Colorado Springs. Um, but it was like way on the outskirts of the property. And it was, you know, it was, it was really kind of a pain to get to go out there. And they said, oh, you know, the, you got your, your Protestants, your Catholics, and, you know, all these different Christian groups. They've got their stuff real up close and everything, but we've got to go out into the boonies. And, and so, uh, so okay. Well, there there also was the issue too that uh, there was some claims that there was uh, a, a, almost an evangelical intolerance at the Air Force Academy. That a lot of uh, evangelical Christians were in very high positions, and so they were very, in, you know, uh, you know, kind of almost enforcing a, a Christian orthodoxy there. In certain respects, was a complaint they were having. Anyway, so a few weeks ago, they. Um, the Air Force Academy put up a outdoor worship area for the pagans, uh, which apparently was very close to the uh, for the Wiccans and other Earth based religions. Apparently, pretty close to the chapel, and it was just really just a ring of stones where they could do whatever it is they were going to do. Um, and um, then somebody took a large wooden cross and stuck it right in the middle of it. Yeah. Right now they're kind of comparing this to um, they're saying this is, this is like the equivalent of if if someone had gone into a um, into a, a Christian chapel and you know spray painted um, something on it or uh, put uh, Nazi symbolism up uh, on, in the Jewish chapel. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I would say no, it's not. This is the equivalent if if somebody went and stuck a menorah on top, or uh, um, you know, this isn't a, a, a directly attacking that particular group. I mean, it it is, but not in the same sense. I mean, it was it was a cross made out of a couple railroad ties, and um, you know, it was easily removed, and there was no actual damage done per se. All right. And I looked at this, and, and at first I was really appalled by it. Like, oh, what do you, what, you know, nothing says Jesus loves you like, here, I'm going to, you know, come right in your face and, and, and be obnoxious about it. The thing is, most people didn't even know about it. Because as soon as, um, as soon as it, it was found out, they got rid of it right away. But, um, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm going, all right, this is the Air Force Academy. These are students. These, are, this is just some stupid prank, you know. Well, I don't. know. It could be that. It could be somebody, you know, kind of, you know, saying, you know, making a real statement. It could be something more. Uh, but shut up! Oh, come and see the violence inherent in the system. Help! Why? Help! I'm being repressed. Mike, I, 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 how do you handle something? Okay, that's 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 often an issue. What's the best way of handling? Something? And, um, I can handle this. Have a nice day. In my mind, sometimes the best way to handle it is just to, to do it quietly. Uh, you know, and that's, that seems to be something that the, the, these guys really, uh, 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 the one, this one guy, his name is, uh, Mikey Weinstein or Wein, Weinstein. I don't know, man. If you're growing up, I would hope you stop being calling yourself Mikey. You know, it's right up there with you know Jimmy Carter. You know, you know. 
Anyhow, I, I don't. First thought is Mikey likes it. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, the first thought that they, that, that old life zero commercial. But anyway, uh, the guy he has the Military Religious Freedom Foundation, and he says we've been making great progress at the airport's academy. This is clearly a setback. It's rhetorically addressing academy officials. Weinstein said Tuesday, "It's been two weeks. Were you going to get around to telling them about this horrible thing that happened? And why haven't you? Well, you know what? It's probably better." Just to, it, it could easily be removed. It wasn't something that was permanent. Yeah, if somebody had spray painted a cross on there, or had spray painted over, you know, the circle, or something like that, that that, that was going to be some real removal. And and I think, yeah, then then you need to address it. But uh, you know, uh, if somebody, you know, if you can take care of it quiet, if it's something you can take care of quietly. And I would say this, I would, I would think I would be this would be true, even if I came to, uh, you know, my last church, uh, my son and I walked in one morning and, um, we looked up and noticed one of the Clara story windows up above had a hole in it. No, no, I actually walked on the ground and we found a bullet on the, the floor. And we looked up and one of the Clara story windows had a hole in it. Um, somebody had, you know, shot a bullet through there. Uh, Apparently, a random shot or something. So we looked around if there's any others that we could find, and it weren't. It, it wasn't a very big hole. So I just went over and you know we just we just swept it up, and I just told the trustees very quietly, uh, somebody shot a, 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 a section out up there. We're going to need to have somebody come in and repair it. Uh, the shards are in there for the insurance company and stuff. But I saw no reason to stand up from the congregation to make a big deal out of it. Right. Well. <clears throat> you know, and and that's the thing. You, you make a big deal out of it, especially with something like this. Isn't that just going to encourage more people to, you know, sort of copycat the whole thing? I mean, if you just sort of, you know, get rid of it quietly and stuff and then don't give, you know, whoever did it, don't give them the attention that they're looking for, you know. I mean, they're, whoever it was is acting like, you know, like a spoiled child and so... You know, what does a spoiled child want? Attention. So right. don't give them the it, attention. I mean, that's, sometimes it is, but sometimes it's the best way to handle it. Just don't give them the attention they're looking for. Okay. So, yeah, it, it was this was this a really stupid, mean thing to do? Yes, absolutely. Was it right? No, absolutely not. All right. It's, this is really, you know, I mean, anybody with half a brain knows that. All right. The question is... How do you deal with it? And so, um, so that's really the, the issue at hand here is what's the proper way to deal with it. They thought, eh, let's just, you know, quietly take care of it. And obviously, if it would keep happening, then they'd have to do something about it. You know, but there was a, this was so far at least a one time thing. Well, kids, that's enough for one night, eh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's the other thing. If it happens again, then I think it really does need to be dealt with a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, my other favorite part here is that, uh, good old Mikey, they, they had a, they had a, uh, said they discussed it at a staff meeting and Mikey didn't did not attend the meet. Weinstein did not attend the meeting, but he said the faculty member who did describe the official reaction as tepid. One faculty member who attended, but asked not to be named because of some state of the matter, reported Weinstein's characterization, characterization of the meeting. But I think, you know, they were saying, look, it's not done again. We, Thing, you know, taking care of quietly, we'll have to see where things go. On. But, um, you know, yeah, let's just kind of get, uh, 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 you know, oof, that, that website's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what? Have, you know what would have really helped, man? If they'd had a pink cross. <laughs> I have no idea what that meant. All right. Um, Ouija boards. There is evil there that does not sleep. Uh, we've got... All right, Hasbro's been hey. making Ouija boards for years. What did you do with Wicked? <laughs> and what do you burn apart from Wicked for, Wicked? Okay, sorry. The, you froze for a minute there. So did you. <laughs> But uh, so Hasbro is coming out with a pink Ouija board. Um, 
uh, with pink cards and a little pink uh, dial thing there. And uh, uh, then this is obviously being uh, uh, marketed to twin girls, something. They've been around in some form or another. Um, there's some debate about the, uh, the, the history of them. Um, they at least date back in some form or another to the 18th century, um, possibly much older, but there's some debate about whether the stuff that's being talked about is accurate and whether that's actually what they're talking about or not. Um, mm -hmm. Audio is getting really bad now. Um, sounds like a train. <laughs> Really? It's, it's a fan. Fan just kicked back on again. Uh, I thought maybe it was the spirits. <laughs> oh, here. Maybe I'll, I'll move this up closer to me. Don't be too proud of this technological terror. A little better. So. All right. So, Parker Brothers, which is a division of, um, of Hasbro, is uh, making, or has been making uh, these things for a while now years and, yeah and but the the pink one is fairly new it's not brand new in fact toys r us is phasing it out um you can't buy it online anymore from toys r us and uh they they said that they still have a few in stores that are they're basically clearancing it um but but the, this the pink ouija board but they'll be selling regular ouija boards they have been i mean it's been it's been uh uh Ouija boards have been around since 1967. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's the question that, you know, it, it, you know, people try and deal with. Are Ouija boards actually a cult or are they a kid's game? Yeah, and that's, that's the whole question. And, of course, Hasbro is going to say, oh, no, it's just a kid's game, you know. Um because they make money off of them. They're 20 bucks a pop. And all it is is a piece of plastic and a board. I mean, they're insanely cheap to make. doesn't have lots of pieces like Monopoly or something like that. Right. And, and, and you know, yeah, and no, uh, kids are, you know, they're the ones pushing it. And there, there's nothing really, you know. You're the margarine of evil going on here. The other side is, and I've heard a, a lot of Christians say this, um, that it is a, a, a portal to occultism. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the thing. I know people, I mean, personal friends of mine, who have used them by themselves and would ask them questions. And the, question, the answers that they would get would be contrary to... Um, contrary to Christian teachings, um, but also be able to predict the future, like you're going to get a letter from this person. I mean, I a friend of mine was using one, and he uh, he asked he asked it if he was going to get any mail, and it said, yeah, you're going to get a letter from Dale. And, uh, and he got a letter from me the next day, and he had no idea that I was sending it. Yeah, could just, oh, it was coincidence or, or whatever. But um, it was kind of, you know, there was just some stuff that happened that just made him go, hmm, you know, something's not right here. And maybe, maybe there's something more to this stuff. I mean, okay, I'm a type of person that would say better safe than sorry. Right. Um. Maybe there's nothing to it. I got a bad feeling about this. Uh, just like there's nothing to astrology. But I really rec would not recommend somebody go and have um, to an astrologist. I mean, okay, you look it up the paper. haha, ha, that's cute. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend that somebody go to an astrologist and have, you know, their palm read or their, you know, or, or their, 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 astrological chart done with predictions and everything. Right. Yeah, I mean, the problem you're, you're dealing with here is the Bible strictly forbids divination of any kind. 
All right. And the reason is not because, you know, I mean, could could the devil or his demons, you know, communicate with us in some way? Sure. Yeah, they can. All right. Um, does that mean that that's what's going on here? I don't know. All right. But even if they're not, what is it? You are looking for answers for your life in a place where you're told, don't bother looking there. There's no value in looking there. You know, and if you, 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 you want, uh, you want help, you know, beyond just what the Bible offers, go, uh, you know, read some self-help books or, um, you know, or, or, you know, watch Dr. Phil or, you know, talk to a psychologist or, or whatever. But, um, you know, there's just astrology and, and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a, well, it's a gateway drug, you know, because a lot of people have, have kind of checked this out and gone, oh, oh, hey, you know, there's, there's something to this. And then, you know, well, what else is out there, you know, and you start looking into all kinds of other stuff. So, in fact, I have, uh. I have a friend who is a, a medium that would spend time talking to spirits, and she refused to use a Ouija board um, because it was she considered them too dangerous, um, which, right or wrong, I don't know. What I do know is she used to be a Christian. She's not anymore because of what the spirits told her. Now, was that actual spirits talking to her, or was that just her imagination? I don't know, but... You know, the devil would certainly like to um, to convince you of, of various things, you know. She's not one of these people that has a t-shirt that says, um, the voices inside my head tell me that you have a problem. <laughs> now, she ended up, uh, you know, embracing New Age religion. So, Southern Third conversation with spirits mm, anyway so uh i mean you know um yeah i would uh, i don't know what to make out of you know pg boards um i mean you know to say you know um hasbro says you know it's simply a game it's fun it's for entertainment nothing more we don't make any claims about it um but i would go into this just as better safe than sorry uh that we just should not even, you know, play with ideas of divination and, uh, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, the stuff that's occultic. Cult- uh, but just stay away from it. Uh, now, some people, the guy says, one guy, well, how's it different than Harry Potter? Well, Harry Potter is by its notion a make believe world. Yeah, it's. Nobody's it's going to have a, a magic wand. They're not going to actually be able to do anything. Um, you know, and I can't think of any place. Well, yeah, they do. They do have their, their you know, they, uh, uh, and to a certain extent, it's a, the uh, 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 the world is kind of a spoof of the um, typical thing. I mean, the students all walk around in robes and black hats and write broomsticks. I mean, come on, that's you know, that's kind of a right uh, has nothing to do with you know Wicca or anything like that. Right, so uh, historic, you know, witchcraft practices and stuff. Well, right, it, yeah. it it borrows ideas from it just enough to sort of make the connection. But right, well, as one friend, one Wiccan friend of my daughter's once said, is uh, Harry Potter is to Wicca as Barney is to dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, but uh, which I thought was cute. But on the other hand, uh, but you know, I wouldn't still. I wouldn't say let's get involved at all. Stay away from uh, the stuff. So. And uh, obviously being eh, pink Ouija boards. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what to even do with this last one. You okay. pick the story, man, so you yeah. can... You... All right. I, I, I had to do a little research on this to really figure out what's going on. All right. The, um, the Sikh religion, S-I-K-H, right, is... Um, the, the thing that it's, it's most known for is that it's, it claims to be all-inclusive. That you can be, um, you can be Christian, you can be Muslim, you can be Jewish, you can be whatever, and still be included in the Sikh religion, right? And um, it was founded uh, 
partly in reaction to India's uh, caste system. I looked it up, but I never knew how to pronounce it, so I finally looked it up. It is pronounced caste, it's a, even though it has a at the end. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I did not know that. It is, uh, well, and, and we've talked a little bit about Sikhism. I don't know a lot about it. Um, I haven't known personally um, any Sikhs in, um, but uh, there, you know, is the one thing that I've always heard about it is that it's very inclusive, right? Well, now there is a new offshoot of Sikhism called uh, Ravidasya Dharam. It's not new, and it's been around for a while. There's like 100,000 um, adherents to it. Um, but it, when they sort of officially split off from the main Sikh uh, group, this caused a pretty big uproar. And, um, you know, they're saying it's a conspiracy to create a divide in the Sikh religion and, and really kind of made a big deal out of it. Now, most of the people in this new group, relatively new, um, are Dalits. They're the, the sort of untouchables, the lowest caste of the, um, of the Indian system. And so this is, you know, they like this. It was, um, and, and even though Sikhism was founded partly in reaction to the caste system, it's still practiced, uh, quite often by most Sikhs in, um, in India. And so this is sort of, uh, here's, all right, all you Sikhs out there that are, you know, being sort of the downtrodden, here's, here, we've got, uh, an offshoot for you. And, um, one of the, one of the big things that makes a, um, makes them different from the main one is that they worship living gurus, uh, which, uh, regular, um, uh, Sikhs, the mainstream ones, um, consider that a a horrible thing and they this group follows the teachings of uh, guru ravi das which is um where they get their name from and he said that people should be judged on their merits not based on their caste or their social status and so they're you know it's sort of like the um (laughs) it's sort of like the martin luther king um version of of sikhism and so, although he wouldn't say based on their merits, he would say that um, that everyone should just be treated equally. The thing that really struck me about this story was that if they're all inclusive, why are they making a big deal out of a group that's splitting off? Can't it, it's like we're all inclusive. Unless you disagree with us, you know, on these points. I mean, cl- clearly, all-inclusive only goes so far. He will join us or die, Master. It just seemed really odd um, to have such a big uproar instead of people just going, well, okay, you know, that's you can go your way and, and we'll go ours and we'll all be, you know, happy Sikhs together. I don't think you're happy enough. I guess it's kind of interesting. It's always fun to me when we can, you know, when you have a religion that says, we're open to anything, except, of course, changing our religion. Then we're not open to it. So, okay, maybe somebody else out there knows more about this and can give us more details, because I sure don't know much about, about it in Sikhism. So, anybody got any further comments, further information? Uh, really would appreciate it. I'm um, Always at um, uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. Or just leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube or one of the other uh, social media sites. So I always appreciate people's comments. It, once in a while, somebody will, um, one of my Facebook friends will say something, or, you know, if you send me a note on Twitter, it's uh, Twitter name is Crossfeed News. Or, uh, you know, lots of different ways to get a hold of me, um, get a hold of us. So, um, love to hear from you. Any comments about any of the stories that we talked about tonight are 
or anything else. Um, and of course, if you do leave a comment on one of the uh, uh, video sites, make sure to watch the next one to come out. And uh, and if it's a, a sensible comment, then we'll respond to it. And so if you're if you're watching this and it's and it's it's not uh, you know middle of February of 2010 when you're watching it because our old episodes are up there, uh, then you're going to want to find the newest episode uh, after you make your comment so that we can respond to what you have to say. Or you can just email us directly and again podcastercrossfeednews.com. Anyway, it's enjoyable to have you here. We thank you all for watching and taking part. And God watch over and be with you. Good night, everybody. God bless.